Let's chat a little bit about long tail keywords versus short tail keywords when you do your um, Google uh, keyword when you do your SEO keyword research, right? So um, there's the example that I always give about my apps. So like well, my, my my general product, which is like you know people search for the word term business plan, right? People who want to write a business plan, it's sort of my niche, and so. The term business plan is what's called a short tail keyword. It's very competitive on Google. It's nearly impossible for me to rank. But um, there are other terms like how to write a business plan for a gym. It's that's what's called a sh a long tail um, keyword, right? It's all like one phrase. But that phrase, I mean, there are far less pages on the web which are competing for how to write a business plan for a gym, then the term business plan, right? So the term business plan, very competitive. The term how to write a business plan for a gym, much, much, much less competitive. Now, of course, there's less demand for how to write a business plan for a gym, but I'm actually able to compete because I don't care how much demand there is on business plan, I'm not gonna see any of the traffic from that because I just can't compete. Like I'm, I'm not even going to be the top ten, not the top ten search results. I'm not even going to be the top ten pages. So that means not even top top one hundred, right? So um, you want to really weigh versus you want to, you know. And uh, long tail keywords they're really powerful because you know if the page gets a lot of links into it and sharing and social sharing things like that, it can be powerful. It can become strong in SEO, and I can start ranking with my with with the page. How to start a business plan for how to write a business plan for a gym? That you know, there's a term business plan in there. I can start ranking for something for shorter tail keywords, as that little by little exposure that that page gets it gets shared, gets links into it, things like that. So it's actually a better way to get propelled in search results um, because you can at least target some term, you can at least get some traffic and, and get started that way in being competitive with bigger and bigger pages, stronger pages. Uh, so that's kind of short tail versus long tail. One tip I want to give. Let's say there's a term business plan. A lot of people, many people, they search for something like not business plan, but um, tutorials for how to tutorial for how to write a business plan. Ideas for how to write a business plan. Tips for how to write a business plan. You see that? So sometimes I, I don't even care. Sometimes I make my I title my blog posts or my YouTube channel videos something like tips, ideas, strategies, and strategies for how to write a business plan for something something, and that gives me a chance to rank for all kinds of combinations, right? Like how to write a business ideas for how to write a business plan, tutorial for how to write a business plan for a gym, all those combinations. Um, they will outrank a lot of the competition because I just have so many keywords in my phrase. And that's actually a way that I um, really boosted a lot of uh, my, that's actually a way that I boosted my YouTube traffic in search. That's how I got a boost in search for, for my YouTube videos. Once I started doing that, um, I started seeing more uh, organic YouTube discovery. Um, on Google, of course, it's so hard because it's so competitive that I, yes, I saw more, more traffic, but it's still not that much because it's Google search and uh, it's again it's like I'm gonna you know I'm, I'm like a broken record I mean Google search is competitive so it's difficult but but this is really long tail versus short tail versus ultra long tail um, and that's how you should think about when, how which phrase you're gonna be targeting when you are doing your keyword research